managers need to realize when they become a manager that they're not part of the band, whether they had a performance background in the past or not. And if they had a performance background in the past, that doesn't mean they can't perform in a different part of their life, but with regard to this band, they're not a performer, they're a manager. Um, they should make a clear distinction that they're not a part of the band. They can be friends with the band, and I certainly hope that they are friends with the band and friendly, but as far as making any illusion about being a part of the band, no. And as far as, you know, lifestyle issues about hanging out, partying with the band and stuff, that's something they need to really draw a fine line on because one of your duties as an artist manage manager is to make sure that the band's keeping it together. And that is, you know, make, instead of them staying up at three in the morning, making sure that, you know, they're showing up to rehearsals on a regular, at, you know, on time, they're showing up to interviews on time. So I think, that, I think that's a slippery slope. And it's not to mean that they can't hang out and celebrate and have a good time, but I think hanging out in, in the way that you just suggested is a very slippery slope for an artist manager. The way an artist gets a manager, is, is, it's, it's really going to depend on, it could go either way. I mean, it may be that the band itself is looking for a manager. There are a lot of managers out there. I mean, people, just the way record companies scout, have a &R people who scout. Um, management companies have people who scout the clubs. And we'll scout myspace.com for people who are up and coming. As far as bands go, who, for example, maybe started recording and think, oh, the next step is we need to get a manager. I think there's, in the, you know, there's kind of a cookie cutter way that a lot of people who want to be come performing artists, musicians who want to make a living doing it, think there is to make a living in music, and that is we make a demo, we make a CD, then we get a record, like, then we get a record deal and we write off in the sunset. And inherent in that, many bands feel that the way to get a record deal is to get a manager. Or that if they secure a manager, that their career is going to be guaranteed. And I mean, that's obviously a naive and a pretty nascent way of looking at it. But you know, many bands who start out are young and not, they're not uneducated people. They're just not necessarily as savvy about the music industry as people who operate on the business side of it. So I think that's something. And I, I think for bands who are serious about succeeding, at some point, they're going to have to have a manager. The question is when. Managers, and I'd like to add something to that as well, uh, managers, unlike lawyers, um, are not regulated. You know, um, So m the actual practice of artist management is something which is not regulated. The International Music Managers Forum wants to create a code of conduct. Um, as a matter of fact, they're going to get some, some Europe, I believe 12, I, I believe 14 countries in the European Union are in line to sign on to this code of conduct which basically kind of outlines what the duties are ethically and professionally as far as professional responsibility goes in the management of an artist. That being said, uh, the main instrument that governs the conduct of an artist manager is going to be the contract. And the contract is going to stipulate a variety of things. Number one, it'll stipulate the length of, an artist man of the artist management agreement, which is going to vary depending on <laughs> the leverage of, of the manager and the leverage of the artist. Um, three years wouldn't be an unusual composite of all the various varying degrees. Um, artist managers obviously are going to want a longer contract because they're going to have a longer time to develop the artist. They might want five, six, seven years. Um, artists might want to have a shorter contract because if it doesn't work out, they're not going to want to be under contract. So the artist management contract is going to lay out the term of their agreement. It's going to lay out compensation, which I said before, a really good industry standard that will say 15% of gross realized income, excluding advances for recording or various tour support issues. Um, it will lay out to a certain degree the roles and responsibilities of both parties implicated. So it should lay out the responsibilities of an artist and the responsibilities of the manager. It's, it's a bit more difficult to enforce the responsibilities of an artist. You know, that's a bit more of a murky subject. But the roles and responsibilities of a manager can be laid out more. Um, their ability, you know, they have to be there to counsel them, to work with the various members of the team. Those are spelled out. Um, the idea of, of expenses that can be incurred by the artist manager, and which should be reimbursed, which shouldn't, those types of things are mentioned. Something that's really important that many artists who've had any modicum of success hopefully were aware of when they signed their artist management contract um, is the idea of a sunset clause, meaning that when the term of the artist agreement, artist management agreement ends, that that artist is not paying a full 15% to their former manager. So it'll spell out that issue as well. It'll spell out any issues regarding um, any disputes the two parties might have. Those are some of the biggest 
issues, I would say.